animation has had many different looks over the last century, but nothing has been more friendly and appealing to a wider audience than the animation that came from the Walt Disney Studio. The studio's rules for animation give a realistic feel to a world of imagination, and nobody has lent a larger hand in creating and continuing that look and feel of Disney's animation than Eric Larson. Walt Disney was always on the cusp of pushing the art of animation forward, but he didn't do it alone. During the 1930s, Walt had forged a team of animators that developed the style of his short cartoons and eventual films, and they would go on to be known as Walt's Nine Old Men. One of those men was Eric Larson. Starting in 1933 at Disney, he would get his first big assignment of animating the animals in Snow White. He continued his work on animal characters throughout most of his animating and directing animating career, giving human emotion to characters who didn't talk. His specialty was bringing a lovable warmth to small creatures and making otherwise forgettable characters charming and unforgettable. Characters like Figaro and Pinocchio, Sasha from Peter and the Wolf, and the Vultures and the Jungle Book. The charm and warmth that he brought to small animal characters, he also brought to arguably his biggest animation role, the character of Cinderella. For Eric Larson, Cinderella was soft-spoken, passive, sweet, and comforting. That was not unlike his own personality. Despite being seen as one of Disney's important animators, Larson was a pretty passive character who was trampled on by the other major animators who were clinging on to get their credit and move up the ladder. His work on Mr. Toad in The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad went uncredited, and he was replaced as Sleeping Beauty's animating director after many years of working on the film. But Larson was often credited as the glue that held the animation team together. Even though he was soft-spoken, he wasn't egotistical, which made him the perfect candidate to mediate serious work issues between animators. His push for working together cohesively is what kept the studio running on chorus, allowing them to make serious hit film after hit film during the 1950s and 1960s. But after Walt's death, the animation team gave Larson less and less to do, ultimately trying to phase him out of his position. But as many of the animators at Disney were reaching their retirement years, Larson looked toward the future of the studio. Unlike many of his peers who continued to cling on to their top spots as animators, and being phased out from the animation team, Larson decided to go a different way, end his drawing career, and he opted to become the studio's recruiter and teacher instead. For the new batch of Disney animators coming into the studio in the 1970s, he taught animal anatomy, gags, the studio's art style, and how to bring warmth to even the most evil of villains. His near decade and a half as the studio's bridge between the older and younger generation gave us animation and entertainment's most recognizable names. Between 1970 and 1985, he trained people like Tim Burton, Brad Bird, Henry Selleck, John Lasseter, Don Bluth, Glenn Keane, Ron Clements, Joe Ramft, Andreas Deja, and so many others. Despite being pushed around by the older generation, Eric Larson was the leader of the new generation that looked up to him. After 40 years at the studio, his credit would finally come, not with being an animator, but with being so selfless that he gave the next generation the tools to continue the tradition of great storytelling. Of course, many of these people would go on to do great things at other studios or in other forms of entertainment. Henry Selleck would best be known for directing stop-motion films like Nightmare Before Christmas or Coraline. Tim Burton would go on to direct many, many films and, well, be Tim Burton. 
John Lasseter would leave Disney to kickstart Pixar Animation, which would in turn bring him back to Disney as the head of the animation team, and Don Bluth would go on to make some of the greatest non-Disney animated films of the 1980s and 90s, like An American Tale and All Dogs Go to Heaven. Eric Larson's influence goes beyond just teaching the next generation. He can directly be credited for helping create the atmosphere that would lead to Disney's renaissance in animation and the rise of Pixar animation. He can be credited for molding the entertainment industry long past his death. And he stayed with the Disney company until 1986, where he finally retired because of his frustration with the company downsizing the animation team. He eventually passed away a few years later in 1988, but was honored by the team he helped create at the Disney Animation Studio when they named a prince after him. Maybe it's symbolic of who he was, a soft-spoken, charming, caring prince who would eventually save the studio he loved. So goes the story of Prince Eric, Walt's selfless animator who shouldn't be forgotten. Thanks for watching this video as part of our Disney Legends series. If you like this series, let us know in the comments who else you would like to see covered as part of this series. We've got a lot of ground to cover, not just with Disney, but with Pixar and Lucasfilm and Marvel and so many other subsidiaries underneath Disney. So let us know and keep on moving, people.